Hey, we are back with the dimensionality reduction series. In our last video of the series, we talked about one way to escape the curse of dimensionality through an older algorithm called PCA. Today we will talk about a newer and very popular dimensionality reduction algorithm called UMAP. PCA and UMAP are very different. PCA factorizes a matrix characterizing the data, which puts it into company with algorithms like NMF or SVD. But UMAP, like Tisney, if you know it, builds a neighbor graph in the original space of the data and tries to find a similar graph in lower dimensions. But how does it do it? UMAP stands for Uniform Manifold Approximation and Projection. <laughs> this uh, sounds intimidating. And the paper behind UMAP can be even more intimidating. But do not worry because we break it down for you. The two steps of UMAP are high dimensional graph construction and it's mapping to a lower dimensional graph. The construction of this high dimensional graph is what makes UMAP so special compared to its competitors, since it's hard to do it right and fast. And the cool part about UMAP is that its steps are mathematically proven to work. So first there was the data in the high dimensions and we want to approximate its shape or topology. Each data point is a so-called zero simplex and a certain theorem ensures that the shape of the data can be approximated when we connect these zero simplices, which are our data points, with their neighboring data points forming one or two or higher dimensional simplices. And with this we can approximate the topology. So all what we need to do is to make these connections. For this, the UMAP algorithm extends a radius around each point and makes a connection between each point and its neighbors with intersecting radii. So far the radii are equal. But remember, we want to approximate the shape of the data, so we want a connected graph containing all our data points. But this wish of ours brings in two problems. Firstly, it often happens that in the data there are larger gaps, where there is no next point to connect to in the graph. This happens usually in low density regions. Secondly, there are often high density regions where there are a lot of neighbors in the given radius and everything is way too connected. This second problem gets even worse with the curse of dimensionality where in high dimensional spaces the distances between points become more and more similar. Okay then, so if we have these two problems with a fixed radius, then let's use a variable radius instead. This choice is also mathematically supported by the definition of a Riemannian metric on the manifold, but do not worry about that. Just keep in mind that there is math proving that the choice of a variable radius does not cause any trouble. So now the radius is greater in low density regions and smaller in high density regions. But UMAP does not estimate density directly as a number, but uses a proxy. The density is estimated to be higher when the kth nearest neighbor is close and lower when the kth nearest neighbor is far away. Notice that this k in kth nearest neighbor is a hyperparameter that we need to choose because with its help UMAP makes a density estimation to find the right local radius. If k is big, then more global structure is preserved. If k is small, then the radius decreases and the local structure is more preserved. So the right k could give the perfect balance between local and global structure preservation, but there are rarely any recipes for finding the optimum automatically. Some trial and error is required since k depends on each dataset individually. But not all k nearest neighbors are equal since each have different distances from the point we are looking at. Then the connections between each point and their neighbors get a weight, a connection probability where points which are far away are weighted less and lower connection probability. Now that this high dimensional graph is constructed, it is ready to be projected to lower dimensions. This graph projection algorithm is too much for Ms. Coffee Bean to explain in detail in this video, but 
You can imagine this projection as taking the high dimensional graph with their edges as being springs, where each spring is stronger as the edge probability increases. Which means that points connected by high weighted edges are more likely to stay together in the lower dimensional space because the spring holds these points together. And perhaps interesting to notice is that these spring forces are rotationally symmetric, which leads to clusters sometimes landing on one side after one UMAP run and on the other side after another projection. So UMAP has two main strengths over the famous graph-based dimensionality reduction technique called TISNI. It is faster due to its optimizations and strong mathematical foundations, and it has also a better balance between locality and globality in clustering. Take for example this visualization from the awesome blog from Google Pair linked below. We have this mammoth in 3D on the left and we can see side by side how UMAP and TISNI map this 3D mammoth into two dimensions. We can play around with the number of neighbors taken into account when constructing the high dimensional graph and we can clearly see how low numbers focus on the local structure while higher numbers more on the global structure. The minimum distance parameter allows to specify how tightly the algorithm will map points into the target low dimensional space. A high minimum distance will spread the points more. But it is important to notice that the stepwise change of these two parameters continuously changes the UMAP result. TSNI on the other side is not that great in this aspect, because when changing the parameter of TISNI, TISNI's result completely changes. We really recommend you to play around yourself with all examples in this blog post. So far we have seen examples where UMAP maps from 3D to 2D, but the visualizations we have seen so far are toy examples. They're just for us to get an intuition about the inner workings of the UMAP dimensionality reduction algorithm. What UMAP excels at is reducing from a lot of dimensions. Here is a real world example of 764 dimensional MNIST data containing handwritten digits. It could be nice if we could reduce their dimensions to two or three dimensions so we can visualize this pixel space the digits are living in. For this, we can write a little Python code. To load the MNIST data, to load the UMAP package for dimensionality reduction and a visualization package of your liking. We like baby plots and you will see why. We read in the data and we see we have 60,000 training instances of 28 times 28 pixels, which are together the 784 dimensions we plan to reduce from. For reducing we fit and apply the UMAP algorithm and we do it once for two dimensions and again for three dimensions. We reduced to 2D and 3D to show you what the cool thing baby plots can do. It takes both the 3D and 2D embedding and can animate a transition between the two. <laughs> How cool is that? Hereby we can see that UMAP could already cluster almost all handwritten digits together, meaning that UMAP here worked as an unsupervised clustering algorithm. Also we can see how useful a 3D visualization can be over just 2D, where more complicated structures and relations can be visualized. If you want to visualize these things in 3D yourself, in either R, JavaScript or Python, and load your interactive 3D plots into a PowerPoint presentation to show to everybody, check out the Baby Plots website. This was it from Miss Coffee Bean. Read the paper if you're interested in the mathematical theory and proofs behind UMAP. Find it linked in the description below. Or watch the first author of the UMAP paper presenting his UMAP invention linked below. Now go and reduce your dimensions with UMAP. 